and he's got to pay attention to you. Tell him what to do, and as soon as he breaks that, tell him no. Good. All right, so let's do some real world stuff today, Joe. Let's get him out in public. Let's see how he acts. And we just, I just want to observe him first. Just let's see what he's going to do. And then we'll start doing some corrections. So here we're going to socialize okay, so Max, who wild, has not been socialized that much in public. We've done a lot of training, but let's see how it works out. Let's see what he does like going through here. I'm going to let you go in front of me. There's a dog right there. Right here, see if you can see the warning signs on Max. The dog's wearing a scarf, so he's probably going to want to meet. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. And here I want to focus on what can you really do in this kind of an environment. Okay. There you go. It's always the dogs with scarves on. Good. Good. Perfect. Good. So we don't even want to meet that dog. I mean, that's already a disaster. But by, so I think one of the things going on, I think the prong is making him a little bit more wound up, right? So let's just go over here. Let's unhook the prong and keep him on the fur saver for a sec. And the reason I'm saying that now is only because he's pulling against that leash and we don't have the ability, like in the park, to give him that long line and the correction. So we're gonna just take it off and put him on the fur saver. There we go, good. So let's just kind of walk back and forth here a couple times. The dog's going to be there. Um, just try to get his attention. Like before we start the walk, tell him something to do, like sit down or whatever you want to do. Yeah, put it on top of all the other collars. Perfect. Back to sit. No. Nope. Good. Perfect. Good boy. Okay. So like just walk down like five paces and then come right back. Don't even let him engage with that dog. Oh. Put him over here, and he's got to pay attention to you. Tell him what to do, and as soon as he breaks that, tell him no. It's always more important to tell the dog what you want yeah. them to do. And don't put him in a corner. Like, you want him to be able to go back just a tiny bit. There you go, perfect, like that. Sit. Correction? Max, sit. Good, perfect. And keeping the dog dialed in will help. Go ahead. All right, so here comes this. So all we got to worry about is him. Good, loose leash, good. Walk him away. Just keep walking. He is the strongest ever. Yeah, huh? Come on, go. Now, unlike Joey, this lady is a little bit out of her zone with this dog and can't handle. Okay, so loosen the leash. She can't handle the corrections that this dog needs. So you have two really Good. dominant dogs. Good. No, no, no. Sit. Good. Tap, tap, tap. No, sit. Again, tap, no. No, sit. Good. Perfect. And now let's move him. Let's give him some, some movement. Like just back and forth. She's at the bank, so she's not going to bother you. Good. Good, Joe. Don't let him piss. Don't let him piss. I'll tell you why in a sec. Come on back. His natural tendency, right? This is something I've never addressed in a video. If a dog is dominant and he feels it, and then that's kind of broken in him, the first thing he's going to do is go over and mark something, especially a male, because then he's going to go, this is my turf. That's the one thing I never let him do. And I've never discussed that in the video before why, but it's critical. As soon as he's upset, okay, I'm going to listen. Okay, now I'm going to go piss on something, right? That's the worst thing he can do. So right now he's got to know, nah, -uh, uh, uh, this, I'm going to piss on that tree if anybody's going to piss on that tree, right? right, right, right. So yeah, that's a, I'm glad he tried to do it. Totally normal, even though you just neutered him. He's going to have that personality for a while. He's a dominant dog. Good. So back and forth. So now we're going to do the same stuff we do at the park, but we're doing it in the real world. Now the tension in Max's leash is not helping him at all. Good. In fact, you'll see later things will change. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, good, Joe. Okay, and then turn around. When the leash is tight, the dog has nowhere to go. You want to get that as loose as possible. There you go. Much better. Yeah. And she's going to be coming back out at some point, so we're going to see her one more time. And that, 
if a dog is that aggressive to my dog, there's nothing, I mean, I can't expect him not to do something, right? right? That's, you know, that's totally normal. Good, but nice loose leash. The biggest thing with him really is that, that, that tension leash. Like if you have him back against that wall and that leash is tight, he's got nowhere to go but go forward and kill, right, right. Right? right? So I always give him room behind him, room in front of him. That means if he decides to go back, he's like, oh, okay, I can get away from this. Yeah. Essentially, that's all I want to teach him. I want to teach him that, hey, this is an option, right? Just like if somebody's going to fight you and me, first thing you and I are going to do is going to go, no, nah, I don't want to fight. Right? And now if I get against that wall, I'll kill you. But I'm going to try to back out of it too because I don't want to fight. That's right. Right? So that's what I, I want him to have the exact same option that I would want right. if confronted. Right? So perfect. So let's walk him back and forth. You can see some more things. We can even take him to the park. And as much as possible, you want to keep short sessions going. Good. You can, sure. Yeah, might be kind of this way, sure. As long as we can keep short sessions and then multiple recovery sessions walking the dog that will help the dog to see this as a positive experience, a learning experience. Go straight. Now when you get to this tree, let him, let him take a potty. Let him pee on this tree. Now I'll tell you why I do that. The first part of the walk, I demand you engage with me. Now, I'm going to be fair and let you pee, but it's going to let him see, okay, I got to listen, then I get to do what's natural. I get to pee, I get to do whatever. But then if he doesn't pee now, then he doesn't have to pee. Right. Then everything else is just going to be marking and posturing, and that's what he's not going to get to do. Okay, so he's just on a, on a sniff fest, which means he doesn't have to pee. Good, so we'll go right back. This time when we get to the street corner, I want to make him sit, wait, before he crosses that street. Just a good habit to hardwire him into. Right when you get to this corner, just make him sit. And solid obedience and a good relationship with the person always helps the dog think more clear-headedly. Excellent. Good, and then tell him, let's go and let's go. Yes. Good. The great thing about this session is that these multiple exposures to the stimulus and then this walking in between allows the dog great time for recovery. Great. Okay, so now he's sniffing again. So the more you can keep him out of the sniffing mode, the less frustrating the walk is gonna be for him. Because he's seeing, he's, he's seeing, he's smelling what we're seeing. Like, oh, is there somebody there? Is there, that woman's wearing this, this guy's wearing this, or whatever. Hey, if you like this video, hit the subscribe button and hit that like button, because you're gonna see a lot more videos just like that here. Try to get this, let me see if it's like Joe. I'm gonna just, hey. I'm going to just pop this off because what I want to do is I want to keep this as high as possible on his neck so that all the corrections are going to come up here, right? So here, hey, sit. Good. No, sit. Good, right? So a nice loose leash. And I don't know if that lady's, I'm going to just go around the corner with him. Hey. Good. No, sit. Good. So he's seeing these kind of like affection symbols as like, I'm out of the mode, right? So that's why, like you're doing now is, no, no, sit. But he has to know this is kind of a calming thing, not a wind me up thing. Good, that's good. So if he goes to that, it's even better. Max, let's go. Give him enough leash so he's not on a tight leash, right? Because what you're tending to do is you're trying to get him to walk this perfect heel. Yeah, and that, that's going to come with maturity. But right now, if you see, if you nag him into it, it's going to be, he's going to constantly be like, uh, 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 tight leash. So instead, when I'm walking him here, I'm going to say, hey, Max, let's go. I'm going to walk and I'm going to give him a little bit. Then that's where I'm going to correct him there, right? So give him, hey, let him see this. Hey, Max. And keep him kind of engaged without, you know, pestering him but make this a little bit more loose because this whole idea of trying to keep him right next to you is going to be something that's going to develop more in his maturity than through your teaching. Right. See, like here, it's, see what he does when it's loose? When it's tight, he's fighting you. When it's loose, he'll give in. Good. Right? And you got to be, this dog, if, you, if, you're, if you're a good boy. See, okay, there he sees this dog. So let's see what I can do. Hey. Max. Good. So I'm just going to keep moving. Hey. Max, sit. No, sit. Oops. Sit. 
Good, good boy. Sit. I know, sit, good boy. And as much as he responds to that, it's obviously not aggression, he's just startled. He's trying to, he's just trying to do something. And you just keep doing what you're doing, good boy. And then you got him to a reward place. But yeah, try it with a little bit looser leash. If you wanna see the rest of this video, head over to robertcabral.com and see this video and so many more.